Yo, you guys, this is Blacklist of the Abyss, and this is my review for Hunter Hunter episode 104. Now, um, this one starts off with Mirum. Uh, well, not with Mirum, but uh, it's about Mirum. We learn that he hasn't been eating because he's been focused so much on Gungi. Um, we also learn that Shawapoof, he gave these fodder guys powers as well. Though I guess they're not really fodder. Since they're chimera ants, but you know, whatever. Um, we after that, after we see the uh, those two chimera ants, I think they're the same ones that end up uh, going to go help out ha Hagi later on, Welfin and Robata. But um, uh, right after that, we see Nov, and he's taking out the puppets. And Flutter is watching him do it, trying to figure out what his abilities are. But he's just been using physical attacks. Um, he, after a while, he does actually end up using his ability, though. I mean, it's called Hide and Seek. And we actually get to figure out the details about it. We've seen him use it before, but we never really knew how it worked. Now we do. Uh, he opens a portal into a Nen space type of area. It has four floors and a total of 21 rooms. Which, you know, at first it's kind of explained as teleportation, but then they go into it. It's not really teleportation, which is kind of cool because Togashi he took like a simple ability in teleportation and then kind of he made it more complicated. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's a good thing he made it more complicated. Um, we learn about how know if he has the master key and how the exit and entrance are linked. But if you have the master key, the exit can be linked to any entrance, so he can reappear anywhere. I'm assuming it means that. Without the master key, he would have to reappear at the same exact spot he disappeared from. The same place where he opened the entrance to the room. But since he has the master key, he can reappear anywhere. Um, we also learn a little bit more about Deep Purple. Apparently it's the no, uh, Morel's Deep Purple soldier things. They're really defensive. Um, they attack indirectly. They're always on the run. They don't want to get too close because they don't want the opponents to realize that they're just Nen soldiers, stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. And then Nov, he ends up figuring out what Flutter's ability is. It's really it's really weird though. He does it really quickly. All he, he sees Flutter flying around and that alone is enough to tell him exactly what his ability is, at which, you know, I don't know how he, how that stuff, how he just came up with that. I feel like that was a little too convenient. You know, he, he just so happened to say, oh, you know, now that I think about it, I did see some dragonflies flying around. Those must have been his. You know, like, <laughs> that's, how can, I don't see how you can just jump to that conclusion that he, whatever. Uh, he ends up jumping to that conclusion. And after that, we end up switching to Morel. And he's just screwing with Chi Tzu, pretty much. You know, and we, we know that he has a plan, but we don't really know what the plan is yet. Before we figure it out, we switch back to Miram and the girl whose name we still don't know. They're playing Goongi still, obviously, and um, Miram, he's come up with this foolproof strategy where he thinks that there's no way he can lose now, but then the girl ends up countering that strategy. And we learn that she's the one who actually came up with the strategy a few years ago. And because some guy tried to use it against her in the national championships, and she devised a counter for it, they ended up taking it out of textbooks and everything. So the way she described it was that she had created something, but after she had devised a counter for it, it felt like her baby was dying, kind of. And she she finally, so Miriam had recreated the strategy that she thought of, so it was like her baby was coming back to life, but then she just had to kill it again by countering him. So uh, that was actually kind of interesting. But after this, then we, we go back to Morel. He gets up, he's walking over to Chiti, who's like laughing and reading manga. And we, we see that he created this giant rope of smoke that wrapped like all the way around the area, then wrapped around Chiti's ankle when he wasn't paying attention, which is like some, some type of key skate or a horror strategy <laughs> to do something when the guy's not paying attention. But um, Morel begins to wind the rope so that Chi Tu has no choice but to get closer to him and then eventually touch him to end the game of tag. 
but uh, Chitsugi tries to break the rope. At first, he just runs at full, at full speed, but the rope stops him, and he starts trying to punch the rope. That that doesn't work. Uh, yeah, he. It's. It's kind of he. It was kind of surprising because he actually he created a new net ability out of nowhere, which it's it's been a while since I've seen someone like legit just create a net ability. Like it's what, what was it Kalua and Gon last time. But I just feel like someone like Chitu, who doesn't really know much about men at all, shouldn't be able to create an, an ability out of nowhere like this. Because he's not, he's an idiot, Moral says it too, he's an idiot. He's not like Nurem, who could just learn how to do stuff. You know, he's not like P2 and the other Royal Guard, you know, he doesn't know much about Nen, so I don't know why he's able to create a new Nen ability out of nowhere, but whatever. He ends up creating this crossbow, which doesn't help him at all because it's slower than he is and Moral points that out then he just starts to get you know kind of lame and desperate and his, his facial expressions were especially annoying he just turned into like this typical villain who just like I said is lame and desperate but um he Moral he ends up revealing that the morale that we thought was the real morale was actually a smoke clone uh, because the crossbow has like these Wolverine like claws on it and Chitu tries to go in and stab him which technically wouldn't be touching him because it's not his skin I guess whatever and that's when the, it turns into smoke then morale comes up behind him and just touches him on the shoulder and we learn that along with the Nen rope he also created a, sm a smoke clone of himself while well, Chitu wasn't paying attention. So that's that. The game of tag ends. They go back to the city. And we learn that Chitu actually can't use that power anymore because that was that was a condition that he had set. So he kind of just gives up and he leaves. He says he's going to go back to Shawapoof and get a new power. And that's when Morel comes up with the hypothesis that Shawapoof can can release none abilities. He didn't say create, he said release. So I don't know if, I guess it's the same thing, I don't know, but you would think that it's not, but whatever. Um, uh, I mean, uh, what, we'll find out soon enough. But um, personally, I don't really think that Shao Proof is going to bother giving Chi Tzu another ability. He already failed. Like I feel like once Chi Tzu goes back and he shows how lame and desperate he's gotten, he'll Shao Poof will probably come to the conclusion that he's not useful anymore. Just get rid of him. But um, we end up seeing Nove and Moro reunite. Um, Nove has he's taken Flutter out already. And um, just a, just a side note, the way he sounded, he was talking at this particular point in time. It reminded me of Aikudu Mikisugi from Kill Out Kill. I didn't actually look up look it up and see if they have the same voice actors, but they they sound the same. Just throwing that out there, not really important. But um, because of Flutter being taken out, back on topic. Because of Flutter being taken out, Leo's plan is just kind of ruined now. But he tries to fix it. Uh, he actually reveals his power to us. He lies to the other two, saying it's he let, it lets him like find people or follow people, something. But um, the real power is that. It's 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 called the Rental Pod IOU dispenser, and it allows it actually allows them to copy somebody's ability in exchange for owing them a favor, and it has two conditions. One is that he has to have either seen the ability or know its name, and the second is that he actually has to grant the favor and have the the target acknowledge that the favor has been granted. Then after that, the ability will activate. However, another way to do it is with a rental period where the person whose ability he's using can't use their ability. But and then Leo at that point is able to do it. Then he writes an IOU. Then he'll do the favor later. But um, he ends up using that ability with with uh, uh, Flutter's dragonfly things. And they're going to go forward with the plan now. So that's, that's pretty much it for the episode. There's this one scene at the end where Miriam realizes that he's enjoying his matches with that girl. 
But um, other than that, that's pretty much it for the episode. Um, in the preview, we can see Miram talking with the girl again. He He's missing his left arm, I think. Yeah, I, I, he's missing his left arm, and he has his tail pointed at her through. So that's interesting. That's an interesting development. But um, other than that, that's that's really it for the episode. So um, I guess I'll give this episode a 6.5 out of 10. I mean, it was an okay episode. Um, the stuff with Morel and Chitu wasn't as exciting as I thought it'd be. It was cool to see Morel outsmart him, but like, it's kind of brought down by the other stuff in the episode. Um, you know, I, I, I thought the scenes with the girl and Mira were cool, but at the same time, it's, they're, they're playing games. Apparently, she's going to have an impact on him at some point, so in the future, all this stuff might become important. But right now, I'm not really sure how it is. So for now, the rating for the episode is a 6.5. But um, that's, that's it for this review. Rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.